So welcome back to another channel, not another channel, this is another video. So the fourth chapter of a psychology and this video is for the only a class 12 GSUB that is a Gujarat board and this subject is a psychology and the, the chapter of this subject is a four chapter. I already read all these one, two, three chapters. Okay, so the three chapters is available on my YouTube channel so you can see and yeah, you can listen also. So and now the reading the four chapter that is attitude and prejudice so starting from this the man is a social animal and so from the birth till date he learns from his experiences in various social situation and changes that take place we hold a variety of attitudes in social life of which are towards friends parents relatives social organizations literature culture etc with a wide variety of experiences we tend to get idea about the different individuals object situation or the circumstances in psychological language it can be called the attitude attitude gives a shape to human behavior we tend to have either the favorable or the unfavorable attitude depending upon our experiences so likes and dislikes also play an important role in formation of attitude so it is a, has for the our likes and dislikes that we show our behavior towards a certain people objects or a situation so, do you like this vegetable? Do you like to roam with your friends? Do you respect your elders? Do you like to go to school? So, these are the such questions which is given in the either yes or no. So, we can know the attitude and its direction. So, normally the attitude is either positive or negative. So, attitude can be overt or covert. And it can be seen in our language, behavior, and relationship with others. Social psychology is an independent branch of psychology, where man's social behavior is studied in depth. Attitude is one of the important factors of the study of a social behavior of an individual has for the psych social psychology. So, what is attitude? How is it formed or developed? Can it be changed or not? Etc. If we have the uh, such answers about the questions, then we can understand it properly that what is attitude of other people and behave accordingly to help in creating a better process of social organization. A firm negative thought that is prejudice. The prejudice takes place in opposition to attitude. Prejudice takes place in opposition to attitude means you can say that attitude is opposite of prejudice or prejudice is uh, Yeah Vice versa and always creates a negative effect Prejudice leaves a lasting impression on the behavior of the individual as well as the people living in the society Prejudice is the cause of the social conflicts and the social discrimination it is important task for the psychologist to free the society from the prejudices and make it more organized and harmonious. Hence, it is necessary to understand a few strategies to reducing the prejudices. So, moving forward, that is attitude. As we have seen earlier, that attitude gives a direction to the human behavior and help in a living and adaptive and adjust to life. So, it is important to study the nature and the meaning of attitude. So now we will study the nature and nature and the meaning of attitude. So the definition given by the B. Kupuswami, which is the Indian psychologist. So he gave the definition of attitude is that attitude is a consistent, learned and impulsive response or a behavior towards a specific object or individual or a situation. Now the second definition is given by the Gordon Alport. So he says that attitude is a mental and a neural state of readiness to respond to a specific object or individual or a situation with it with which it is related. So now the third definition is given by the Baron and the Bay in 1996. So this is that when a people evaluate any aspect of their social world like objects, thoughts, events and individuals, social groups either in a positive or a negative way and respond to it, then it is called attitude. 
now the four definitions given by the ITO and the SCSI your pet in 1999. So attitude represents fundamental factor of all facets of thought. Moving forward, every society has got a wide variety of tradition, values, culture, morals, thinking, life strats, etc. Which bring about a change in attitude and behavior time again and again. So they also change the human values and goals. On the basis of this about, about definition, we few points become clear about attitude. So first point is that uh, attitude is a psychophysical behavior of the individual arising out of a mental cognition. And second point is that attitude gives a direction to the human behavior and leads him or her to a give a response. The third point is, has every individual possess the different attitudes, their reaction to them is also different. Now we will study the nature of attitude. So to understand attitude, it is important to understand its nature. So the following parts are the nature of attitude. The first point is that attitude is not inborn but learned reaction. The second point is that attitudes are relatively permanent. The third is that attitude is related to the individual or the object. The fourth is that attitude develops from the individuals towards a group. The fifth is attitudes are extended to group. Sixth is attitudes are purposefully and full of feelings. Seventh point, attitude shows likes and dislikes of an individual. So we will discuss all these seven points in detail. Means I will read all these points in detail. So attitudes are formed on the, the first point. Attitude is not born in born, but a learned reaction. So this is the first one I am reading the all these in the detail okay so I'm reading it attitudes are formed on the basis of the way in which an individual is brought up in the family school society and culture that is if the child tells the mother that he does not want to eat a vegetable then their mother gives the uh, their option null food items to the child to eat so whenever the child shows that his dislike towards a particular thing object mother gives gives Mother gives him other option to choose from which the child likes or desire. In the same way, attitudes can also be formed in children regarding TV programs, cartoons, serial, etc. Now the second point is attitudes are relatively permanent. Attitudes forms on the basis of the experiences are stable, permanent and bring long term change in a behavior and so sometimes are difficult to change also. As per the experiment by the Norman Silver, it's proved that attitude once formed do not change that easily, especially in a social tradition, customs, etc. For example, our years to gather many thinkers, social reformers, religious leaders, etc. have tried to eradicate the caste system, child marriages, untouchability, etc. But still many societies are not ready to accept the change and still practice it. We have to keep trying till we can bring awareness and awakening among the people. This shows that, that the change in attitude is difficult but not impossible. So we can say that the attitude is a permanent. Now the third point is the attitude is too related to the individual or object. Attitude is an individual personal reaction or the behavior towards a specific thing. They are unique or the typical characteristics of person. As for the all part attitude is a mental readiness to respond to respond to respond to a specific object, individual or situation. Attitude encourages an individual to react either in the favor or the opposition of an object or the thing. That is a person who is in a favor of a semester method in exam will always speak about a good about the semester system and he will show how it is advantage. He will never show the disadvantage of the semester because he wanted that the semester system exist. He do not want to 
uh, remove that system so he will keep telling others this is the advantage of the semester now the fourth point is the attitude develops from individuals towards a group such so as like learning perception even in attitude we can see the principle of generalization attitude attitude which are formed on the basis of individual experiences slowly move from the individual to the religious group or the community to which he belongs and everybody starts reacting in the same way that is many times it has been observed that when a girl from the rich family gets married to a boy middle class family the people assume that she comes from the rich family she will not do any work and on the basis of this they generalize that the girls of rich family are not good if an individual is cheated once or twice by the businessman then the individual generalizes that all businessmen are cheaters so attitudes formed on the basis of individuals experiences slowly pass on from individual to the group to which they belong now the fifth point is attitudes are extended group members of the same group usually have a similar attitudes they do not remain only to the individual but the whole group gets affected by it there is gandhiji's principle of cleanliness and untouched ability was not only his principle but of a whole ashram and all those people who were associated with him his revolution on the swadeshi movement and bharat chhodo slowly spread over all over the india and become very strong so sometimes it can be said that the few personal attitudes can be extended to the group so six point is the attitudes are purposeful and full of feelings of course most of the attitudes or say uh, most of our attitudes are purposefully and based on our feelings they make an individual behave either in the favor or opposition of another group or the individual generally the attitudes are not very firm that is even after the having the very positive attitude towards the religion many religion readers and superstitions people are not ready to accept the scientific explanation for the religious practices and in the same way the people of the science background don't accept the preaching of religious readers because they consider them to superstitions in this way the both the groups oppose the views of the each other has for their attitude so now the seventh point and the last point of the nature of attitude attitude shows likes and dislikes of an individual every individuals will have likes or dislikes towards an object or the thing the way a person thinks feel or acts is guided in a direction by attitude an individual likes to be a company in the company of the people whom he likes and also maintain a long term relationship with him supposing he dislikes a person then he tries to remain away from him for example a child who does not not, not like to go to school or homework he will develop a dislike towards the school teachers parents and develop negative attitudes towards them aur wo banata rahega wo bahana banata rahega ki school nahi jane ka wo bahana bahana banata rahega now the, moving forward so the second second that is a formation of attitude so we have seen them from the earlier features that attitude is not inborn or inherited but it is learned by the process of socialization and learning skills attitude is formed on the basis of the experiences develops and then becomes a from firm different types of learning methods play an important role in the formation of attitude learning method which help in attitude formation the first is classical conditioning so conditioning means to join or to associate in this process a neural stimulus is associated with an established stimulus response connection that is in a pavel studies the food salivation reactions occurs naturally the reaction of a salivation that occurs due to the sound of a bell a substitution for the food is called a classical conditioning Due to this type of conditioning, many positive attitudes are formed. That is, when a mother breastfeeds her baby, it experiences satisfaction, which is natural. The baby will immediately show the happiness on seeing the mother after the many such experiences of breastfeeding. The presence of a mother is enough to make the child feel happy, and so will develop a positive attitude. Operant conditioning. In this with in this type of the conditioning, those responses which are reinforced become a very firm and repeated such attitude will be awarded by the teacher parents uh, friends etc 
This method also helps in a controlling behavior. If a certain attitude is systematically rewarded, the person learns that attitude. And if he is punished it for them, he avoids to practice it. Positive reinforcement like praise, rewards, etc. help in developing a positive attitude. While the negative reinforcement like punishment, avoidance, shock, etc. help in developing a negative attitude. Children from many attitude by the reward and a punishment, that is, if you raise the uh, child and ask him a favor, he will immediately do it. But if you scold him, that, then he will refuse to do the favor. Now, the third method is the observational method. Observation is the main source of value of emulation. It is not possible to learn emulation without observation. Children closely observe the behavior of parents, relatively, and other family members and learn many forms of behavior. They acquire the many new attitudes towards the racial groups, neighbor, and the ideologies by observing behavior of attitudes. Acceptance or the non-acceptance like or dislike towards the attitude towards the attitude by the people will help an individual in a developing either a positive or a negative attitude. That is a teacher asked a question to a student and if the student gives a right answer and the teacher presses him in front of the whole class then that the student feels happy and other students are also encouraged to answer it. But if the student gives a wrong answer and the teacher abuses the child then it creates a negative effect on the mind of the child and also other students. Hence positive or negative attitudes can be developed by the observation. Now, exemplary behavior. Man is a social animal and hence the majority of his attitudes are formed and developed with his interaction with the social environment. Every individual observes, evaluates and also sees how it is looked upon by the society and then decides whether to practice it or not. Usually, every individual evaluates and perceives attitudes of the other people in a wide variety of the ways. But it can be said that only that behavior is exemplary which is accepted, accepted by the society. Many people have a father, mother, teacher, religious leaders, social reformers, political leaders, actors, etc. Their ideals and they try to evaluate their desirable and exemplary behavior in their daily life. That is, Gandhiji's simplicity behavior language was always in relation to his principles of truthfulness, determination, his prayers, which all were the examples of the positive attitude for his followers, and they were also started developing his attitude. So many people like Dr. J. J. Prakash Narayan, Swami Vivekananda, Dr. APG Abdul Kalam, and Amitabh Bachchan, Dr. Abmedkar, Smitri Indira Gandhi, Kalpana Chawla, etc. They have become the positive ideals of the people which reflect in their language, thinking and behavior. The second factors that influencing the attitude formation. The first chapter means just I have read the first formation of attitude. That is a learning methods which help in attitude formation. Now I am just reading the second Point, that is a means second topic you can say that the factors influencing attitude formation so, so there are the many factors okay so attitude provides a direction to the human behavior attitude provides a direction to the human behavior and so it is important to understand attitude which factors play an important role in shaping our attitude how does it develop etc the questions which needs to be answered during his life cycle, the individual learns the attitude either in covert or the overt ways. It is also developed through the interaction, exchange of thoughts, behavior, evaluation, etc. He is in the process, accepts the positive ones and rejects the negative ones. The following factors affect attitude formation. First is family. Second is socialization. Third is direct personal experiences. Fourth is effects of mass media. Now the first is, I will discuss or say I will read him that's a family so family during the entire lifespan of an individual family plays an important role the family is a small unit of a society but an individual an individual is the smallest unit of a family and it play an important role man is a social animal and so for him the family is life Family is very important. 
the most basic and primary knowledge about socialization can be learned in the family it is through the parents and family members that the child has contact with the social world in family every member has a different roles to play as per the age and experiences every member in the family behaves directly with the with each other a human child is mostly influenced by the mother's behavior and as per the studies human child is more dependent than animal babies positive attitude in the children are developed by the interaction with the parents family members and how they respond with the love satisfaction cooperation praise etc in the same way the hatred contempt in the same way hatred contempt malice jealousy etc develop a negative attitude in the children often the children classify the behavior good or bad on the basis of the likes and dislikes practiced by the family members many times when a parent scold the child and a grandparent scold their parents for shouting at the child then the child will develop a good attitude towards the grandparents and a bad attitude towards the parents in short the family forms a many attitudes of an individual now the socialization socialization it is a term used by the sociologist which refers to the uh, lifelong process of inheriting and disseminating norms customs values habits and ideologies it is a process through the which the social and cultural continuity are attained socialization is a lifelong learning process every society has got a different social structure and hence the process of socialization is also different there can be changes in the process of socialization because of a close internal in interaction with the different cultures their lifestyles customs traditions etc which also affect the socialization process in children after the family the other institution that affect the socialization are the school culture religions caste etc the children who are brought up in a family who have a strict and rigid, rigid religious practices have the positive attitude towards religion language provision geographical location all help in a socialization that is a gujarati will eat their stable food punjabi will give a more importance to the dairy products in south india the more usage of the coconut and rice etc this is just a lifestyle and a habit as per the geographical location how to respect and welcome the guest clothing lifestyle etc developed by the process of socialization now the third is the direct personal experiences experience is the best teacher every individual learns from experiences individuals experience are specific and their understanding is also based on the perspective of the individual many people in this same situation react differently because their experience past knowledge education understanding is all different that is a person of that is a per, that is a very strict teacher has to help any student in a personal way by taking a care and guiding her then the student will have a positive attitude towards the teacher in a comparison to the other students because of direct personal experience effects of mass media so this plan major role in the life of human being so it is said that the 20th century was the science era and the 21st century is the technology era in this modern era the science and the technology both have become comprehensive they both help in conveying information and entertainment faster which has changed the life of a human being all over the world in ancient times the people had to go the personally to give a message or a letter which was very time consuming where has today's modern world newspaper tv mobile internet whatsapp twitter facebook google etc are the import are important media of the communication which are the quick and authentic and even taking a place anywhere him the world can reach the people where everywhere within a few minutes and we also get their response immediately there was a live telecast of uttarakhand floods on a television and the people saw how the military added those who were affected by the floods seeing this attitude of the people become a more firm and a positive towards the army so mass media has become an important source in a changing of forming attitudes of the people attitudes gives a direction to a behavior and they help in the process of social development 
attitudes learns and they keep on the developing so we should avoid negative attitudes and have a more positive attitudes for the harmonious living in a social world techniques of attitude change so earlier in this lesson we have seen that attitudes are learned experience education socialization group propaganda etc help to develop attitude many negative many negative attitude are harmful for the society individual and also the world such attitudes are difficult to change but not impossible family parents school teachers religious leaders political leaders newspaper television etc help in bringing a change in attitude the following are the techniques you know which to bring a change in attitude that is education publicity group discussion and norms let us understand about techniques in data so education we all know that learning is a relatively permanent change in a behavior arising out of experience training and practice it means that education can bring a change in a behavior which can be either covert or overt learning in a school or colleges or learning by the socialization can also bring a behavioral changes in the individual a traditional farmer through the education and learning changes his method of farming by his using a modern technology and also develops a positive attitude towards it in school college parents have attitude developed a positive attitude for activities for all round development to of their children and not just a bookish knowledge publicity so publicity propaganda advertisement etc all effective measures are the means for the learning mass media also plays an important role who does the publicity in which group it is done which medium is used all this question affect attitude the tagline used in advertisement also become important in bringing a change in attitude behave before 100 years 90% of the people were dependent on the agriculture in, in india and at that time it is was believed that the children are assets but slowly the increasing population and negative effect changed the belief of people to we to our to hum do hamare do the group discussion the communication and interaction are two important features of group discussion and they have been a changing the attitude of the people in development of the attitude group memberships group activities status all play an important role two groups with the opposite attitudes can by interactions and discussion bring a change in their attitude towards each other In 1943 the new com was successful in changing the attitude of rigid attitude of rigid college going girls management and employees can also solve their problem by open discussion had interaction India has been the victim of terrorism from the last many years by discussing this problem with the various leaders of the world we have been able to get their attention towards harmful effect they too have joined with the india to fight terrorism so by the group discussion we have been able to change the attitude of the world towards terrorism norms so many times the individual is not ready to change the attitude even by the experience so understanding or discussion at that time the norms or rules are effective tools to bring a change in attitude in a country like india even today ancient and traditional customs are practiced which are not good in such situation in such situation the norms laws rules etc can help to bring a change there are the where many temples in india where the ladies were not allowed to go but in 2016 supreme court of india gave the what is that the has for the law man and woman have equal right to worship so women were allowed and it was accepted by all so sometimes the norms or laws can also help in a changing attitude of the people still there are the many or so many negative attitudes prevalent in social world which needed to be changed for that psychologists social reformers teachers political leaders etc should take help in the judicial system now the obstacles in attitude change so we have seen in the chapter that how the important it is to remove the negative attitudes from the mind of the people for the betterment of the individual society or the nation 
even after trying very hard. Many times it becomes difficult to change the attitude. There are the many obstacles in attitude change and they are also follows. Strength, complexity, importance, interconnectedness, functionality. The first is strength. Attitudes which are there in individual for a long time cannot be changed easily as with the time they become firm and stable. Extremely strong attitudes are difficult to change that is. Though we are influenced by the western food habits, we cannot forget our traditional ones either neither are able to change them. In America still there is a racial discrimination between the Negroes and whites. In Asia, India and Pakistan people have not been able to change their attitudes towards each other because they are very strong. Complexity. An attitude is formed. An attitude is formed by the multiple factor. It is said that the development of the attitude is the complex process and formed by the large number of the factors. And so it is difficult to change. A simple attitude is easier to change than a complex one. Social reformers have tried too hard to abolish the social customs like a child marriages and our system, but have not been successful because of its social complexity. And such customs are still prevalent in the society. Importance. In every human beings, the life, different things are important at the different point of time. An individual behaves as per the importance of the situation. When attitudes are related to life goals, their importance increases and they are difficult to change. For example, suppose for an individual, his friend has a very important place in his life then in such situation. He overlooks all the negative aspects and continues to be a friend with him. Interconnectedness. Many attitudes are complex as well as interconnected. An attitude that is closely connected with another attitude becomes more balanced. Such connection strains each of these attitude connected attitudes are more difficult to modify. For example, a boy or a girl belong to some religion and fall in love, want to get married. Then they are made to understand that love marriages are not acceptable and so it should not be practiced. But the boy as well as the girl are formed about their attitude towards a love marriage as all factors are in the favor of it. Caste, religious, community and falling in love with boy of the same community etc are all interconnected and so very difficult to change their attitude towards it functionality if an attitude is useful to a person and serves many important functions as well as needs that it is a less subject to change for example many times it happens that people have a positive attitude towards a certain religious leaders political parties or because they help him to get social status, power, increases their self-respect and esteem. In such situation, it is difficult to change attitude towards them. Has they play an important role in their life? Prejudice. So now, we will discuss the prejudice. So majority of the problems that arise in the world today, like terrorism, racial discrimination, problems of reservation, caste discrimination, inter-caste conflicts, cold wars, religious, bi religious biases, etc. are the result of a negative attitudes like prejudice. Prejudice can be a sometimes bring very destructive outcomes. We are all living in the world of science and technology, but the most painful situation is that we cannot live our prejudices and live a harmonious life. Life. A long time negative attitude can later change in its prejudice. It is acquired without making adequate inquiry and without adequate knowledge. Negative socialization can lead to the prejudice. If we want to live in a peaceful, harmonious life, then it is essential to eliminate or reduce the prejudice. Nature and definition of prejudice. The word prejudice is derived from the Latin word, the prejudicium. In which the prey means before and tuition means the judgment. On the basic of these, it can be said that the prejudice is a judgment beforehand. The psychologists believe that it is a predetermined negative attitude and there is no supportive evidence or proof for it. The prejudice is a practice and in an aggression manner in which is harmful for the society. Definition of prejudice. The first definition is given by the new com. So, the prejudice is 
preconceived attitude, opinions, feelings, or thought with a view to show opposition. The second definition is given by the Ogborn. So prejudice is an impulsive negative attitude, which is a predetermined and acceptable thought, which is a uh, without any proof or fact. The third, which is given by the P. Kupuswami, the prejudice is an aggressive negative attitude, which is learned without any support or real facts or sufficient scrutiny. So, on the basis of the above definition, we can say that the prejudice is a predetermined thought or attitude which is not supported by the any real facts. So now we will discuss about the nature of our prejudice are as follows. The first is the prejudices are based on the inadequate knowledge and information. The second is the prejudice is always aggressive. Third is the prejudice teaches an individual rationalization. Fourth is the prejudice arose of poisonous feeling. The fifth is the prejudice are grouped oriented. The sixth is the prejudice is passed on from the generation to the generation. So now the first is prejudice is based on inadequate knowledge and information. Before the socialization or the other social regions, an individual becomes a member of a particular group. He follows the beliefs, attitude, prejudice, etc. Followed by the group of members, but sometimes it is also on the basis of the personal experiences. Usually, when a person is asked about the for reason for the prejudice, he does not have any fact or to support it. But he practices because the other member also does the same and is not ready for the change. It prejudice is always aggressive. So prejudice is based on inadequate information, which is never tested, but it is the center of emotion and aggression. It is directed towards an individual, caste, community, group, religion, etc. From from for whom there is a prejudice, it is expressed by the using the full language negative behavior, aggression, violence, etc. India and Pakistan are the two countries whose prejudice attitude is reflected in sports. For example, in the cricket world, the cup final match between England and West Indies, then people of India or Pakistan are not bothered who, whoever wins, but if the sum final is between the India and Pakistan, then the whole scenario is different. If the India wins, the people will burst to cackles and rejoice with such aggression, which is suggestive of a prejudiced attitude towards the other country. So, prejudice teaches an individual rationalization. Rationalization is a defense mechanism where an individual uses the false or the connected reason for his behavior, as the individual does not have any justification for the prejudice and does not accept his negative behavior but he tries to logical reason for out of his action. Prejudice arose poisonous feeling. Prejudice is a negative attitude which gives it rise to the negative emotions and aggression. If one group shows the aggressive attitude towards the other then the other group retaliates with the more aggression which increases the prejudice. Prejudice gives rise to the many antisocial activities like communal rights, strikes, destructions, etc., which increase the conflicts and negative effects. The prejudice are group oriented. So every member of the group has different types of experiences, beliefs, understanding, etc. Within the group, members which give rise to the prejudice. Such individual prejudices are generalized towards the people. Religious, group, community, etc. If we have seen one businessman who is a cheater, then we say that all businessmen are cheaters. That is, the whole group of the businessmen are categorized as cheaters. If, if it's a class two, the three students are not cheaters. The teacher develops a prejudice for the whole class instead of those students. Prejudice is passed on from the generation to the generation. Man is a social animal and so all his life he undergoes the process of socialization. He realizes that the prejudice is the result of personal experiences, social conditioning and present social situation. Many times we have seen that the children do not understand the prejudiced behavior of an elders in the family. But as the time passes and the child grows up and matures, he starts understanding the prejudiced behavior by the interaction and socialization. He also starts behaving in the same manner. So we can say that the prejudices are passes from generation to generation. Techniques of reducing prejudice. In earlier chapter, we have studied the prejudice is negative attitude, which is give rise to the aggressive 
activity as well as response so it is a harmful for the society it leaves a long lasting negative effect which harms the harmony and peace of the society the big challenge for the psychologist is to work for the society without prejudice or reduce the mutual prejudices in society a few strategies of reducing the prejudices are as follows that is socialization intergroup contacts reorganizing learning in a family and school mass media and recategorization cognitive interventions developing positive attitude and through norms i will read all these in details so now the first one is socialization the prejudiced behavior is learned by the process of socialization through the family, region, society, community, group, etc. Inadequate information and knowledge give rise to the prejudices. So it is important that they through proper understanding, the correct information, knowledge with the justification can help to reduce the prejudice. In ancient, in ancient time or uh, in ancient India, intercaste marriages were not allowed because of the caste discrimination, but due to the socialization, it was possible to change their thinking, and hence the people started accepting their intercaste marriages, which is a positive step towards reducing the prejudices and also caste dis discrimination. Intergroup contacts an important technique for reducing the prejudice is to provide opportunities to various groups to come into a contact with each other when people have to work together it is very difficult to maintain the negative stereotypes for each other so but merely increasing the context will not lessen the intergroup conflicts when the group social and economic status is similar increasing their contact is worthwhile Intergroup contacts can help in reducing negative feelings and can give rise to the more positive attitude such atmosphere or should be a creator where there is a trust, faith, scrutiny, love, love, tolerance among the two groups rather than the hatred, resentment, insecurity, etc. This is the possible only by the increasing the intergroup contact. So reorganizing, reorganizing learning in family and school. For the human child, the first school is the family and the second is the school. In the both the institution, the child learns various types of lessons. In the school and family, if the, we want to reduce the prejudice in the children, then a more purposeful education should be provided. In school, if more importance is given to your group learning and activities like social service are conducted, then the prejudice can be a prejudice can be reduced. Even in the family, the parents should not force them their views or opinions prejudices on the children, but instead of teach them to independent in their learning as for the Stimbara's studies. It is found that the illiterate people take it to the traditional values and so it is important to educate them. Harding and his college says that change can be brought about in thinking by sending a strong message through the teaching learning process. Now the mass media. For sending a message to a large mass of people Various media of communication are useful. Mass media can help to spread a message to a large number of people speedily as well as accurately. Science and technology has played an important role in the development of mass media. Newspaper, radio, television, internet, Facebook, SMS, etc. are the powerful means of public education and also shaping their opinions. In ancient times, women rule was look after the family children and do household work. They were not allowed to go out, but the present situation has changed because of a mass media continuous spreading spreading a message of a save a girl child and educate them has been effective in changing their thinking towards a girl's education and women liberation free fair and unbalanced use of mass media can reduce the social tension and help in maintaining a social harmony Recategorization. When a person from the different groups see themselves as a member of a single social identity, their prejudice against the against the former outer group members change. Due to the favorable attitude towards the group, positive context increase and prejudices are reduced. Once the group boundaries become weak and ineffective, the groups are socially categorized differently, which help in reducing or eliminating prejudices. In ancient time, the caste structures was divided into many parts like subcaste, higher and lower caste, and so on. It gave rise to the prejudice. But with the recategorization, this kind of attitude can be eliminated. 
So cognitive intervention. So attitude is based on three main components, cognitive behavior and the feeling. By cognitive development, we can bring a change in individual's perception, thoughts and attitude. The cognition means understanding, knowledge, ability to accept adequate knowledge and also pass it to other people convincingly. For removing the prejudice, cognitive change plays an important role. Many times people with the high social status, power, religious leaders can help in bringing a change in the cognitive process of individual or in or group. In today's world, many communities organize group marriages to reduce the unwanted expenses and seeing these other people are also encouraged to practice it. Mass media and advertisement play an important role in a cognitive development. The developing positive attitude. The bridges means a negative attitude which are formed by inadequate knowledge and information in any society to reduce the negative attitude. We have to develop a more positive attitude. People who have a bridges to see only a negative aspects in all situations and also behave accordingly. Positive attitude can be developed among the people through the various activities like providing a proper knowledge, safety, security, face-to-face -face persuasion, modifying the behavior patterns, role, playing, etc. In ancient times, there was a gender inequality where the woman had to stay in the house and look after the children. But the, in the present world, there is a no difference in that is a man and woman are equal. Propaganda and advertisement like a daughter makes a home, save the save a girl child who will marry your son if there is a no girl, etc. Help in reducing bridges for girl child. So. The last point is the through norms. Norms help the people maintaining a social peace and law, order, law and order in the society. Bridges gives rise to the social conflicts, tension, etc. is a various social situation. Law and order can help in maintaining peace, safety, scrutiny and controlling the social life of the people. For example, to increase the female ratio, we should stop a female feticide and sex test which is a legal crime. Moreover, to make a woman capable and independent, Equal Inheritance Act has proved to be helpful. Many such laws and acts have been increased the safety of women and so they can work freely with the males without any fear. So in this chapter, we have tried to understand the effects of attitude and bridges on our human behavior, negative attitudes like conflicts, tension, unpleasantments, unpleasantness and are increasing in all societies and hence it is important to find ways to reduce them. We should recognize such bridges, stay away from them and try to develop positive attitude which will help in the development of our country. So by this I will end this video and I will meet I means I will be back in another video like this only. So bye have a good day.